After you finish setting up the Clash Reporter add-on, you'll have three or four sheets just like this here, with teachers, classes, work, and if you choose so, also students. This data is kept in your spreadsheet and you can use this data to analyze the teacher and student uptake of Google Classroom, or you can export that into a Data Studio report. First thing to do is make sure you're using a super admin account. The Classroom API requires that you're a super admin. So make sure that the account that you have is set up like that. And also I'm just gonna show you the organizational unit structure that we've got in place here. So we have one OU called All Schools. Within there we have four schools. Within each school we have a OU for users. Within a users there is staff. And then we have a OU for teaching staff. We've also got students and within students, we've got students broken down into year groups um, or age groups, and these each have their own individual names. So we're gonna go into a new spreadsheet and in that new spreadsheet, we're gonna install the Class Reporter add-on. So the same as any other add-on within Sheets, we go to add-ons and get add-ons. From there, we're gonna search for Class Reporter and you should find that the class reporter add-on is available there to install so you just need to click on it um, as you're logged in as a super admin you do have the option to do a domain install that won't be necessary you just need to install it for the single user and then you'll be asked for your um, to confirm your account make sure that the super admin account is ideally the only account that's signed in if not at least the first account that's signed in and then you need to review the security permissions. We do have a description of each of the security permissions that are required and the reason for that requirement. And then click on allow. Once you've done that, the add-on is installed. You can then click on done and close the marketplace. And then now when you go onto the add-ons menu, you'll find that the class reporter menu has been added and you can just open class reporter. So the add-on has a built-in guide for the first time you open it, which talks you through each of the steps. So step one is to select the organizational units for your teachers. So when you click on the teacher OUs drop-down, you'll see all the OUs in your domain, and you need to find the ones where your teachers are. So we have teachers in the teaching staff OU. But it's really handy if you use the search function. You can just type in teach and that will find any OUs that start with those letters. So I can select the four teaching staff OUs that we have set up and then click on close and then we move on to step two. So this is where we need to click on settings and we need to tell the add-on what the names of our organizations are, the schools that we have in this um, domain. So it gives us options for each of the OU levels. So level two, happens to be where all of our names sit. But you can also set custom names if your OUs aren't named correctly or they have coded names. You can type in the names as you wish them to appear in your report. I'm gonna stick with level two and that's bringing in the four school names that we have. Once you've clicked on save, the option to import teachers will be enabled. That is verifying that you've set the names appropriately and when you click on import teachers, all of the users in your OUs that you've selected will be imported into a sheet called teachers. And now you have the option to add students. Now, if you don't want to use students, just click on skip. If you do want to include students, then you need to enable the students checkbox and then you can click on the drop down. And we need to select each of the OUs that contain students. So you might have several dozen or maybe even hundreds of OUs where students live. So clicking on those individually might take some time. But if you click on the OU above, that will select all of the OUs below that level. And again, we can use the search. So if you type in the first few letters of students, you'll see all of the OUs that begin with those letters, and they will still select all of the OUs below that. So if we move the search, you can see they've all been selected. Click on the header again to close, and then it will take you on to the next step, which is to go back into settings. And we've got a few more options now. So within settings, we can set a date, a date range, if you like. 
So the date range of when you want your data to start and end, and this is looking at the um, assignments or the posts that are created and the date that they were um, last modified. So we could, for example, look at everything from the beginning of this year. And um, we've already set our organization names, but you do have the option to change them here. Um, and next, if you include students, we can also add group names for students. So here, um, the appropriate level would be level five, which is looking at the, um, the year that these students were taken on at the school. So we've got intake 2018, 2016, 2017, etc. But you might like to set these to more appropriate names, in which case you can just change to custom names and it will keep the existing um, leveled names if you do that, or if you click on custom names first, you'll have a blank field here. Uh, and then you can just type in the, the names that you would like. So here in the UK, most schools will call their, year, their groups of students year one, year two, year three. Uh, I say in the UK, I know that's not every country in the UK, that's in England and Wales, I believe. Um, but different countries around the world have different names. So this option gives you the choice to select your own names. Um, obviously, if you've got several dozen different um, groups of students here for each of the schools, you'll need to set those for each. So just repeat that over and over again, and then click on Save. Once you've clicked on Save, the add-on will validate that you've selected all the group names correctly, and you'll now be able to import the data. So what this means is it's going to import all of the classes, the work, and the students, if you selected students, into your spreadsheet. This part can take some time, so there's an option there where you can um, enable the add-on to email you when it's finished importing. You don't need to leave the spreadsheet open, you can close it down, it'll carry on running in the background and you'll receive an email when it's done. And when you come back, you should find that you've got all your data imported. Um, so we can see now that we've got the teachers there that have been imported, we've got the classes that are taught by teachers in the OUs that we selected. So if you only select um, teacher OUs from one school, for example, you just see the classes from that one school. We can also see the work that's been set in those classes. So that includes um, announcements, questions, and also assignments. And then on the students tab, like I said, if you've selected students, then students will be imported. You can set up a schedule, so enable schedule, and then you can decide how often you'd like it to happen. On the trial version, you're limited to one import every month. Um, with a subscription, you can run an import every day or every week as well. Once you set that schedule, you can enable the option to email yourself um, and it will email you. If you disable that, the report will still run and the data will just be imported into your spreadsheet. So once your data is imported and you set up a schedule, you're ready to now create a report to make this data more visual.